I am the living legend, the true alpha male, the bearded beast. Those are all facts. I'll tell you something else is a fact. We can't, we can't skate around this. This is how it is. When you look at YouTube, the number two search engine in the world, I have set the record by a long shot of having the most videos about hair loss. I have thousands of videos. No one comes close to that. I'm somewhere in the top five for most popular channels largely devoted to hair loss. With that being said, over the years, I have developed theories and observations to help you decide if you are going to go balding soon. Because that's a very popular question on the number two search engine in the world. Am I going bald? I know this. I'm the guy behind the camera keeping up with it. Oh, that's a popular topic. Let's keep making videos to feed the obsession of, of youth. The paradox of being young, worrying if you're going to appear to age sooner. You know? So I'm here to help you with that. Granted, consider me nothing more than an entertainer because I am just a random guy. That's all I am. But I have helped a lot of people accurately predict whether they're going to go bald young based on my observations. So here's what I'm willing to do. I'm willing to make a video in response to some of you who will leave a comment exactly the way I tell you in this video. You have to list all seven things. Otherwise, don't expect me to respond. And here's what's inspired this. You can imagine if you're me, on a daily basis, you get bling, you get Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, people saying, hey Nick, I'm a big fan of your videos. Will you tell me if I'm going bald? I'm gonna send you a picture of my hairline. I'm like, no you're not. Actually, I don't respond at all. I don't wanna look at pictures of your hairline because that's creepy. I'm old enough to be your dad. I don't wanna be looking at teenage boys and, and that's weird. So, what I am willing to do is you tell me about yourself in a comment and the questions I'm going to ask you are going to help me to determine, look at all the things together to help determine if you're going to be going bald young. Now, it's not a matter of just looking at one thing and say, oh, well, what about, no. I don't care about just one thing. I care about all these things. So if you leave the comment, you, you might see that I make a video response predicting whether you're going to go bald young in life, that sort of thing. So let's get started. What are the seven things? Number one, in the comment. I need to know, obviously, how old are you now? Tell me your age now, you know? Because age 35 is a very important age. That's the age where pretty much you can look at the mirror yourself and determine whether you're going to be balding the rest of your life or not. Now for me, I'm 38 and a half. I've still got most of my hair. So at this point, I'm so close, to, I'm actually closer to 40 than I am 35. So for me, I already know I'm not going to go bald anytime soon because I've held on to most of my hair naturally this far. But if you're 20 and your hairline looks like this, well, then that may be a sign that you're gonna be someone who is, is going to be aggressively balding. So I need to know how old are you now? That's number one. Number two, I need to know, uh, tell me about your one-year-old photo. A photo of yourself at age one is a projection of you at 35. And I figured that out all my own. I've been talking about it for years. I've made multiple videos. When I was age 35, showed a picture of myself at age one and said, look, it's exactly the same. So that's a theory I developed. That's all me. You won't find that anywhere else on the internet. I figured that out. So I want to know what does your hairline look like at age one, because that's pretty much you at 35, amongst other things, just to, to assess this. Number three. At what age could you grow a full beard? And by full beard, I mean sideburns go all the way down to your chin and they connect from this up into the mustache. So if you've got gaps in here and it's not connected and it's really weak and patchy, no, it's fully connected. There's a line that goes here to here and all the way, that's a full beard. If that was before the age of 18, you're more likely to go bald young. If it, you're still in your 20s and you still can't go a full, full connected beard, then chances are you're gonna be the guy that doesn't go bald because it, it's, it's almost like you're switching gears like in my Jeep there. It's like, okay, you're 18, you're an adult now. Well, do you have your beard yet? If you already do, that's a sign that you may be uh, showing more masculine signs as you age. For example, going bald because that's a very masculine trait, male pattern baldness. It's often that men who could grow the best beards are they gonna be the guys who go bald young? There's often a correlation between, not always, but that's why we look at all these things, not just that one thing. At what age could you go a full beard? If it was before the age of 18, you're more likely to go bald. If you're 
still can't grow one and you're well past the age of 18, less likely. But for me, it was about age 16. And yes, I still have hair, but again, we're looking at all these things. All right, next, I would need to know about your ethnic background as far as are you any of the following? Asian, Native American, Irish. If you're Irish, you're, less, you're more likely to go gray young, like in your teenage years even, start having gray, start showing up in your 20s, but not go bald. And if you're Asian or Native American, then you're less likely to have as much body hair, but you're also more likely to hold on to your hair longer in life and less likely for it to go gray. So these are observations I've made over the years. So are you any of those things? Are you of Irish descent, Asian, Native American? I need to know. If not, then by default, you are more likely to go bald. If, in case you don't already know this, technically, I guess it's improper to say this, I'm a quarter Mexican. My, my maternal grandmother was a first generation Mexican American. DNA test shows kind of a projection of how much DNA you have inherited from your ancestors. It shows that I'm roughly like a quarter Native American is what it, what it showed accordingly. But either way, I definitely have that gene, which in theory helps protect me from balding sooner. That's part of my theory And when you look at the whole collection. Next, do you have a low forehead? Let me give you some examples. Anthony Bourdain, when he passed away in his 60s, he had a full head of hair and a low forehead. Uh, not, not necessarily a popular example anymore, but Tony Danza. I grew up watching him in the 80s. Tony Danza is a guy who uh, is at least in the 60s, if not pushing 70 by now, full head of hair, really small. So if you have a low forehead, that is often a sign you're not going to go bald. We're wrapping this up. Number six, your perceived Norwood status. So what do I mean by that? Well, Norwood ultimately comes down to this. Norwood one. Norwood one is you've got, when you look in the mirror, it's flat, it's straight across. But when you turn sideways, your temples go back. That's Norwood one. Norwood two is when your hairline is pointed, it's a V shape, and you have boxed off corners on, on the temples. Number three, Norwood three, is this is now rounded off, and these are rounded off too, almost like Mickey Mouse. I'm telling you that I'm like two and a half. I've got a V going on, but it's starting to round out here, and my hair is thinner on top, but it's not in the category of diffuse thinning. And there's a little bit of almost a baby bald spot forming, but it's not that big of a deal yet, at least. It could be that I, by the time I'm 55, I'll have a complete bald spot in here everywhere else. I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. Ultimately, it's not about if we're going to go bald, it's do you know who you are as a man? Are you good at communicating? Can you make people laugh? Do you know what you're good or bad at? Uh, you know, are you confident? All these things, those are the things that actually matter a thousand times, a thousand percent, not the hair thing. But if you're new to this channel, I'm helping you get in the front door and get past this part, and then we can work out the stuff that actually matters. So what is your perceived Norwood? Is it one, two, <laughs> rounded three, and then four would be where this is detaching an island and you've got a, a bald spot. Number five is when you've got noticeable, uh, no hair starting to show up on top and, and so on. So what's your perceived Norwood status? And don't exaggerate it. I mean, look it up and then try to figure it out, but don't, don't like, oh, I'm Norwood three, when really you've got receding temple. Like do your research and figure that out and tell me. And then lastly, uh, speaking of what I was just saying a moment ago, what are your strengths and weaknesses? I don't want to tell you about your hair if you're not willing to tell me what you're good at and what you're bad at. Because in the real world, outside of your own brain, thinking people won't like me if I go bald, women won't find me attractive if I go bald, forget all that, that's your perception. There's your perception, there's your perception of how people perceive you, and then there's the actual perception that people have of you. And it's funny, so often people get hung up on all these things that worry them. They think, oh, people would like me more if I was this. In reality, people are thinking, I would actually like him more if he was this. And having hair is not on their list. That's your list, not their list. They want you to change in other ways, but not about balding. So that's why I wanna know, what are you good at? Like for me, I'm really good at communicating. I'm really good uh, at writing. I have an English degree, why? Because I was good at English? Well, I was the kid that never studied for a spelling test and always been 100, yes. But I was horrible at math, 
horrible at science, horrible at fixing things, anything engineering. So by default, when I got to college, I was like, everyone's complaining about doing these papers. Everyone's complaining about speech class. This stuff's easy. This is actually kind of fun for me. And then I realized, oh, I'm supposed to be an English major. Okay, got it. And even in my career, like my career is based on those types of things. I'm not trying to do math or science. I'm horrible at those. Maybe you're good at those, but you need to know what you're good at. You need to know what you're bad at because you need to start embracing those now. That's part of your identity. Part of you being a confident man is knowing and celebrating what you're good at, what you're bad at. That equals confidence. People want to see a confident man, a decisive man, a funny man, a man who can communicate, a man who can lead, a man can, who can help other people with their own perceived problems, and even rattle off what I just said to you. If, if you know that in your brain, that the things that worry people internally, people would like me more if I was dot, dot, dot. No, they wouldn't. They would like you more if you were dot, dot, dot over here. These things, if you would change these things. And for men, people want men who believe in themselves, believe in others, help others, that sort of thing. And you can't do that if you don't believe in yourself to begin with. You can't believe in yourself if you think that your looks is the reason people don't like you. I've got to get you past that. So we'll work on that. You'll watch my other videos where I talk about it more regularly. But let's go ahead and try this out. From now on, my rule is if you, if you expect me at all to make a video response to tell if you're going to go bald, you better tell me these seven things in the comment. Your age now, what you look like at age one as a projection of age 35, at what age could you grow a full connected beard, are you Asian, Native American, or Irish descent, number five, do you have a low forehead, number six, what's your perceived Norwood status, and number seven, what are your perceived strengths and weaknesses? Keep in mind, I'm just some random guy on the internet. I'm nobody special. This is all entertainment and nothing more. And that's all it's ever been. But ultimately, I am your manly mentor. You need somebody like me in your life. This is our arrangement. So let's just go ahead and get started. Go ahead and start leaving those comments. My plan, if this goes well, is to do a lot of these videos and like make this a major theme. But I don't want any more messages asking me to look at your hair. I don't want you just telling me one thing about yourself. I need to know the whole thing. I need to look at the whole picture before I can try to begin to, to predict this for you. Your comments belong right here, but you better listen to me. Listen to me. You better put all seven things if you want me to take you seriously. Do you hear me? All seven right here.